or, you know, at a keyboard, or even, I don't have a, a uh, typewriter, obviously. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, you know, over the age of 45, but um, I come from the generation of right on the cusp of, like, Gen Z, I guess, because I'm, I just turned 28 recently, so I'm 96, yeah, jeez. Does not feel like I'm going to be 30 in a couple of years, but that's the way life goes. And it feels like I didn't waste time, but I, I, I feel like I just spent time in a way that is like, yeah, the, in the long con thing. I feel like this is like what I'm doing right now, writing these little weird things that I'm talking to you right now. They're just like long con, like, I'm not getting any, I'm not getting money for this. I'm not getting reimbursed. I'm not even getting clout necessarily, but at the same time, I'm... I'm doing it with like some knowledge, I guess I pre a priori knowledge that something might come of it later. Like I might be, oh, well I, I found that those talks I did or whatever and I did to YouTube and then people, the little crowd of people that watch them actually made me feel kind of good, but not in a hedonic kind of way, but just in a, hey, you know, uh, it, it, everything goes somewhere, you know, like you, if you put effort toward playing the ukulele for, that's just the top of my head because I have a ukulele hanging there. If you go effort, if you put effort toward playing that every day for 15 minutes, these are just going to be pretty good. Pretty, perf uh, not, not, you I mean, not like perfect. Um, it's been a while since I picked it up. Um, but you know, like different instruments I get, you know, it's like, no matter what you do, there's going to be some playback. You know, me just doodling on the piano. You know, me playing a, a scale piano, yeah, like this. Like, you know, like... Everything I did there was like a gimmick, but you know, just just that, like just whatever you do, it's gonna go somewhere. And I don't know exactly how, <laughs> in any way of proving it. That's like a gut instinctual kind of thing I'm saying. But um, yeah, there's things you can do in the in the meantime, like while you know while you're waiting. You know, like I try to be proactive in so far, not just to be like, oh, I'm I'm gonna. I'm gonna be super efficient, I'm just gonna go through that today, or, you know, like, I I clean part-time, like, you know, uh, three to four hours a night uh, with weekends off, so, um, th with that, that's like, a, I try to be proactive, just to kind of not be, you know, go over my time limit and then end up charging a company that's, like, probably already kind of, like, uh, too good, maybe having trouble hiring me and paying me as it is, the rate that I'm being paid, even though that's kind of slight anyway, but, like, I get it, you know, there's, like, a different hierarchy of needs, I guess. Uh, but anyway, but yeah, there's um, things that you can do, like, for example, while waiting for a big break or something. I don't think there's ever such thing as a big break, but check this again. Um, but like I said, there's different things you can do. The, um, like, it, I think there's no way of ascribing meaning or measuring or a qualitative, like, experience. I mean, like, it has to be a quantitative, rather, experience of, like, this, uh, this ten minutes I did practice yesterday, it has to go to something where I have to, that's why everything has to be, you know, super, you know, you know, I want to be, like, the best, I want to be, you know, like, if, if you wanted to, I think art's not the right thing, because I think I'm very much of the opinion of art's for art's sake, so it's, like, the amount of time I put into a song, let's say, when I was, like, 22, um, like, l looking back on it and being, like, you know, I don't regret that. It didn't, you know, I put it on sound, I might have put it on SoundCloud and then not heard back from anybody and just like had maybe a few listens or whatever, even sometimes none at all. No joke. Um, but luckily there's been at least like some people, you know, um, offering some you know, like guidance and appreciation and stuff like that. And I've tried to learn how to better kind of not market myself, but like in weird small ways, better 
make sure that people at least know where to listen. Like I'm, I'm less hesitant of that side of things, but I still very much hate marketing side of, or like strategizing and being like, how am I best gonna make sure that everybody in the world listens to this and has and sees my face and does this and does that. I'm like, nah, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I mean, if it worked for people like Elliot Smith, like who just was famously like not, you know, um, not really good at you know want, wanting or fan of interviews or or people like um tons of indie artists or whatever you know like people that just generally don't like interviews because the interviews are different or famous people like uh, jean-michel basket um basket um you know like just not being able to answer an interview's question because it's like it's so to them it's just like i'm just doing art or whatever i don't see what <laughs> this has to do with anything um anyway but that's just um my take on it it's, could be different from person to person but i think art for me i don't regret it i don't regret a second i spent on stuff i did but i do wish i went about it in a different way i guess i do wish i would have not on like a song and different things i did i wish i wasn't as harsh of a self-critic to the point where i'd be like no this isn't good enough for anybody and then i hid something away and then other times when I'm too eager, weird, weirdly enough, with certain songs where it's like, I feel like I've, I've, this song really speaks to me and I actually like this one, oddly enough. Uh, and then being eager to put it out there and then listening to it later and being like, ah, this is the worst thing ever. Just like with, I don't know. Um, I guess there's... If going back to the process thing, the whole thing I was actually trying to talk about initially, um... But hey, this is the nature of these kinds of videos. Um, my main process is basically, um, rather than me just navel gazing here, um, as much as that can be in, sorry, everything is, turn that off, anyway, um, so. But yeah, um, mainly I just use, like, a, just a notepad app. Um, it's just like, you know, whatever the Android, Samsung kind of thing is. Whatever the template they have. Um, and I basically, I just, if I get an idea, I'm of the mind of like, kind of first thought, best thought with like the beat poets is like, the first thought that in comes into your mind actually is the, the best one because you don't know if it's gonna, you know, like you don't know for sure. So you just roll with it, that gut instinct kind of thing. So I'm trying to be more like that, more accepting of ideas, even like stupid ones, you know. Um, and basically there's like tons of uh, stuff that transcends genres too. Like it's like, one of these, you know, some of these are sketches, like as in like, you know, video sketch, you know, with multiple kind of cast characters probably, because um, that I probably will never film ever. But, you know, just things like new sketch idea, maybe just a written down of an extremely stressed out workaholic boss that never gives himself a minute to breathe every, even when they're out in the Caribbean island free for a few day vacation, they endlessly take calls and never relax the whole time, leaning into this personality of a super busy workaholic CEO guy that can't be bothered to relax. But anyway, um, I just, I don't know, that just, I thought that was funny. I'm just somebody like always on the phone, just being like, okay, like, was that China deal? Is that, how is that China deal going? Like, how is that deal going? Just like always on. And they, and they do this thing as I've met people kind of like that, of just like, this is where inspiration comes. Is like, there's, it comes in disguise, come, you know, like a blessing in disguise where you go to work jobs that I really, really hate that are boring and like everybody there's like personality is like in indistinguishable i'm not trying to be like too like denigrating of them because like a lot of them don't know any better to be honest but you know um just like these people that don't really have much of a personality and they just kind of put on this kind of air of just like yeah i go to the beer get beer or something like something like haha and the farthest i jog today is like uh the I, I went to the, I just did a beer run and that was enough for me, huh? You know, like they just kind of live in this kind of like, they just prop up this kind of like thing of like a persona of like, I am this person. I am the cranky kind of simplistic rustic guy that likes beer. And I don't like to think about all these other complicated matters. I just like to make things simple. And that's fine because, you know, 
I, I have my own thing. It's like my own thing. It's like I am an artist and I am um, withdrawn to these other people and I'm in my own world and I'm doing this. And that's, again, going into the meditation kind of thing where that helps as little as I <laughs> have been meditating, uh, in these, at least in this fast past couple weeks, I think, you know, like I'd, I'd like to get back into meditating, like actual, not, not with an expectation of anything, but just meditating, just like, you know, mindfulness at least um, once a day sometime um but like yeah like that like planting little seeds like that it doesn't have to be two hours because like you scare people off too when you do that right um like in the same way you scare people off if you have this standard set for like what art should be and you're like art school only art school like i never went to art school um i took a couple few college courses that in a community college um one of them was when i was um kind of a do-gooder ish in high school and I was like you know I'm just gonna I'm just gonna uh, accrue enough credits at least to get like kind of like half of you know like I still don't have a degree but then there's also a weird thing with the construction too where I might because I continued getting weird stuff with like the union I was a part of the carpenters union and, and they were like saying that if you just um sign a few things like you basically like accum accumulate a, like a a um i can't remember it was like a surveyor kind of like uh degree if you just show up to your work and you do this stuff and you continue doing your stuff it was weird i don't know so i might have a degree i'm not sure but it's like it's not something that's like actually i feel like i'm using in the real world and i'm gonna go out there i mean my thing is just creative whatever you know fiction creative mm. there's not there's not like much professionality to what i'm doing it's like a kind of rough ragged rugged kind of um, scallywag kind of thing sometimes like you know like I you can see by the my hygiene I'm not like super concerned about hygiene or like wearing the same shirt because like or even you know as much as I kind of was a clean freak in different type of areas like I'm I'm a clean freak when it comes to cleaning because <laughs> that's my job I guess um, but you know I don't really think there's a lot of that like I don't show a lot of that with my room for some reason it's like very dusty very very dusty especially if you turn the light on like that um, and that light's definitely, like, bleeding in, and it's, like, backlighting. I, I, I am aware of what bad lighting looks like, and that this is bad lighting, and this is the embodiment of that. But anyway, so I guess the main thing I'm trying to go back to, like, process of different things, and it's, like, it, it's, like, constantly changing, too. Um, but, you know. Some, because some uh, some ideas I have sound horrible in the moment, like this one might sound. I'm not even sure, but it's like an ironic section about a scholar slash librarian who stares, wait, who starves to death. Sorry, um, to death and hides away in a house where the only thing he can find to eat is his books, of which he reluctantly devours and actually gives him just enough nutrients to save him before um, dying. So it's like a weird, yeah, it's a weird tragic irony just things like that it's probably kind of probably too close to the to twilight zone i try to keep that in mind too if it's like if my idea sounds too close it's like like one time i, I might i think i thought of something that was like a little bit too close to something that cormac mccarthy only wrote and i was like darn this character's way too close so i try to like lean take it back a little bit take it down a notch i guess whittle him down to something that's not so uh characteristic of like of that uh, style which is hard because it's like if you get like i said about liking authors for you know like their personality you know and as much as they're writing because their writing is indicative in their person in their you know work obviously that's why i like a lot a lot of the filmmakers too like i like are like auteur filmmakers and not necessarily in a douchey way but you know like in the way charlie kaufman is you know like you see his personality shining through his work but it's also him trying to be like really really aware of like how cringe some of that is so he's like yeah so i'm going to show the darker moments of my daily life too it's like it's not you know me as a creative guy isn't necessarily me writing all the time it's not me you know he's honest about that which is a lot which i love but you know he's like it, it could be like an adaptation um the nicholas gage great movie um you know like he's showing the kind of these bleaker moments of like loneliness and stuff that that or you know different depressive episodes you know without without being too self-indulgent it's like a it's like a very hard line to cross that i think 
I think there's a lot of, this is why a lot of music, some of it, there's like a whole genre of music and stuff that I don't like. And it's just things that are like way too on the nose, I guess, of one's own like life experience. And it's like, I'm not saying anybody, you know, really, um, uh, I don't want to like name names, but like, it, it is a thing of like, It, here as I try to think of the name, but I only name I only name this because it's like the closest thing I can really think of. But it's like kind of like Eminem or like you know this kind of thing of like in, you know because he's so already too big to fail I guess at this point you know he's like in his fifties now so it's like whatever. Um, but yeah, it's like I think with stuff like that where it's like it's like a kind of style of like just like uh, like a pent up angst and it's fine to have angst. It's fine to do that, but I think by like just being super intense all the time by virtue of that you're not necessarily creating right like you're not really creating things because like all the time because i think you i think in a sense you have to be on about stuff like you have to be like for me like when i'm doing a, like singing or trying to do something like that or there are certain songs that call for me being kind of edgy and being like you know um, but I try not to do it with every song because I feel like if I do, if I'm always on with every single and just being like, you know, it would just be, like, I, I'd be bored of it, you know? Like, I like setting back a little bit and being like, you know what, let's, you know, make no vocals for this song and just be like, you know. Anyway, but you know, something like, I like the idea of like, okay, instrumental takes over in this song, and then just receding back and being like, okay, I'm not gonna be like super aggressive in this, and then I'm just gonna be more of the mind, which is like a preference, it's just kind of thing, and it's like a vibe that not many people might, not every person might like, and that's fine. But I guess in that sense, my music isn't for everything, because or everybody, because there might be songs where, like one I'm trying to work on right now that's literally 30 minutes long, or I'm trying to, I've been trying to make it as far back as like a couple years now, almost, I, at least with the first kind of draft of it, with I just, I basically just kind of started playing and I'm like, okay, well, you know what, I'm just going to stop kind of fiddling around with the idea of it and just, and just try to get into action of like actually just do executing some aspect of it, not being super, um, what's the word, like, um, not trying to jinx things, because I think if you jump into things and you're like super like hopeful you might jinx things so i try to like be a little bit like let's just see where it goes an experimentalist i guess i like to say like just like record some sessions where i'm just like you know try to make a song that is still retains like a theme in it and then and this one might do more or less with like and i still like i have a lot long way to go with it i've only got like i got the general guitar down and then i'm trying to like layer on like different instruments just to make it like a little bit less repetitive with the guitar um in trying to like whittle it down into something that's i can sing on too like make it vocal too so and i did do it like a, a 12 or 13 minute song about like four years ago i think um right around before covid um and i remember like how long that took too like but now um because i was also trying to like i think probably engage with more genres with that one and i'd probably spread myself too thin <laughs> obviously that's like my that's my main kind of i guess uh uh my main weakness i guess but yeah there's i'd say like with you know with that there was like a part of me that wanted to do a jazz thing where i was like kind of doing like more or less like a
something like Elvis Costello or um, Chet Baker, kind of like Almost Blue. But you know, I was trying to. I think now I have a little bit better taste on what I like more, so I'm like less kind of like, oh, well, let's try all these things. So, everything but the kitchen link sink. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at now, is like an impasse of like the overall tone, I guess, of like making it consistent in some way. And there's a lot of like repetitions of different patterns that I just happen to like on guitar that I easily, just as easily translate to the piano if I want. Like just certain things like, or is, um, what was it? It's like, like I really like that chord. And then like sometimes you like, like a minor third above that. And then like, then I'm like, why? Why not go a third above this? And the other thing that was in my ear for a while, I'm doing like this is classical guitar. You can. <laughs> Over F sharp, and then like a G to the B flat. But then there's a part of me, the reason why it's so hard is because there's like another part of me wants to do that, but I also want to do maybe on the second time around to do like this, like. To like. To like C instead. And then. And then. And then, oh, what if I would do up here? Like you could play this E shape too. Or on the not seventh, eighth fret, like that. Now it's a F sharp. You, you can do the same thing. Open chords, like kind of half open shapes. Or up here. I know there's different things you can get away with on the sheer amount of little things like like going from a fifth or a fourth major fourth or a dominant major fifth but you could also do this you know like you don't have to always abide in these things it could be like oh, what if I want to do that kind of do like a full step below then that chord right there. I love that. But there's another thing where I was getting, I was like, this is like kind of, it's like an E flat minor 11th, 7th maybe. Which I, I noticed before, I think. But then like going like this. But you could also make it a major minor by changing just that one minor third to a major fourth. <laughs> so you could do that. And then you could, then you could do that to show that. <laughs> Something like that. To a, what is that? A. B. Oh, this way. G. So yeah, all these different weird shapes. Um, and because of that, I'm, I'm doomed myself because there's so many different possibilities of what I want to do. So, trying to harness all that into something um, cons uh, challenging yet edible, palatable to people. And that's why I try to do at least something when I do musically because it's like always buzzing. Um, and I like this idea of like you're practicing, like when, when I was at work, I was feeling like. A lot of this time this happens anyway, so it's like not nothing new, but I always feel this kind of thing of like pressure of being like, darn it, I really wish I was composing right now. And so instead what I do is like I basically run stuff back in my head kind of. I'll be like, okay, so the song I want to do, it's going to be in this key, or it's going to be that key, or it's like I want to make it in 7 eighth time, I'll do this and thing. And then I'll, I'll also try to like 
in the moment get stuff like little mo notes down which is like I, I can kind of do uh, I feel bad because like you know it's like it, it takes time to write stuff down but like I try to at least get it out of the uh, like out voice record and just kind of try to get it recorded out in some form or another so I can for later, later utilization so that I can actually be like okay well there's a chords of pattern or something that's bothering me that says something to do with like G sharp to C sharp to like something like like that to or wait there's something like it was like Sure, what exactly it is, but there's that, and then there's other things that are like more, maybe more accessible, like like something in G minor, like that, and then doing like like um to E flat seven, you know, and then going from there to like um um to like full walk down to C, because those share the same. That shows you know like a, a, a perfect fifth in a third, you know. All those share that same droning kind of thing, like a... And then also doing that half step, you know, a G sharp. This might have been what I was talking about. But yeah, like this. But you could also do because a diminished, a C, I believe, diminished. Also shares those three, kind of like that. That uh, I also like that half step between that. That's classic. That's classic. You know, pentatonic blues, the flat third. You know, like with a minor third. That's classic pentatonic. You know, like. Oh wait. No. Penta meaning five, I would say. <laughs> That's me busting that up. But anyway, you know, like you don't have to follow that rule. But you know, it's like, you can do, and then like, I'm like, ooh, well that's a, now that's a B flat minor, because those share the same as that, and it also shares the same as E flat. So there's different things you can do that don't really, I can make that a seventh. Dominant seventh, that is. I could make it a major seventh. Or, you know, something like that. I've heard that before in kind of rock. So maybe art rock. Anyway, so yeah, I, um, trying to refocus this back because I said I wasn't going to be too long. I was going to try to split this out maybe two, maybe three separate videos. Um, so I check my cam. Still in the good? Okay. Um, oof. Yeah, you can tell how small my room is. Um, I'm trying to maintain some level of like um, as long as I expend something. So, so not everything has to be you alone. Super, you know, like um, like, um, what's the word, like, just completely, um, killing it at whatever it is, like, it has to be on the fence, like, but to tone it down and to be more mindful, this is where mindfulness comes in, here, this is where me being a hypocrite comes in, uh, because here, uh, here I was the whole time at work not being able to be mindful and just, like, as long as I'm trying to write stuff down on my phone, um, but yeah, it's like that with, like, I, I get these ideas to me and, and being, like, you know, not everything has to be a super, um, you don't have to put your, like, life's blood into everything. Like, you can detach from things and be meditative and contemplative and, and room for that, really room for that in writing or in music and, and make, and you can make music like an, it's purely an instrumental thing. Like, you don't have to sing it. You know, you could just make it, I, uh, you know, like a, something like a, like a, you could make music like, um, like, You 
you know, like not everything has to be the same kit and caboodle, you know, like just borrow from this, borrow that. <laughs> um, it could be a little bit baroque sometimes, like, you know, like so it could be more um, like diminished chords, like, like stuff like, uh, you know, and then realizing the, the kind of relationship between those chords, you know, like, I mean, like, you know, like, <laughs> You know, like every diminished chord is actually related to the to the um, dominant seventh, uh, right above that. You know, like a D, a, a D diminished is actually pretty much a a seventh chord with uh, without the that augmented kind of thing. And then like a you know, like a, a I guess a C diminished chord is it actually you know because it's comprised of three minor third triads or yeah a triad of minor thirds so. Relations, paternal thing, patterns, music on that, thinking about that, listening to other people's music, and like drawing from their stuff, and, and being like, hey, maybe I want to make this a trip hop kind of thing, and I don't need to be um, super into uh, the performance side, but more the production side of like sampling and like sampling stuff like something from a you know it's just a cool soundtrack that has something like that you know something by Roy Ayers or something you know like um um yeah there's yeah I'm just trying to be as open-minded as I can but try to choose and settle on something is my thing is like settling on something that I really really see myself doing over and over again like with I think that's the the case with music and writing I keep going back to where it's like I kind of have weird fallings out with certain things like like I said with like certain things with like be it philosophy psychology like there's phases I go through where I'm like I feel like I, I feel well, like I've learned certain things like it's there's nothing more to learn and I know that sounds like pretty insane I guess especially for those kind of fields but there's things that I feel I don't know that I think they've reached their capacity and there are things you could go further into knowing like I could really get into learning the exact kind of um and i find myself doing this where i'm like i really want to you know learn certain things about math or something because i was n not really good so so bad at math when i was young that i fluked um like oh it was like the sat it was like a placement test i think to, to get in one of the colleges it was like literally like a 23 percent or something out of 100 but i also got like 98 on like english literature or something which is strange the di the polarity there but i do know that i'm bad at math and I could keep making excuses I could just be like hey I just I'm just gonna be bad at math forever huh but I'm not I'm gonna try to like be better about that you know I'm gonna try to not challenge myself like ridiculous things I've gotta have to be you know like um Kurt uh what's the name of the guy go dead I have to be talking about like the incompleteness theorem or the what's it called the incompleteness theorem or you know or physics I have to talk about you know physics and how that relates or particle physics and quantum physics and quantum non-locality and different things with like um yeah see i can't even get any lingo right um the basic lingo but you know stuff like that relativity and you know there's one more thing i want to add maybe not the last thing but um since i'm kind of came to mind i might as well just get it out while i have it um yeah but like i was i was talking about like influences changing almost on a daily basis <laughs> and or at least uh, kind of a few days uh, every few days like i might think of there might be a new author or someone that shows up like literally maybe i don't know it was like maybe a couple days ago i heard of um peter so sortos i think peter so is that his name it was wait, peter sotos yeah i don't even know anything about him um he's still alive i think um maybe from kind of the pushmar generation of early 60s i think as far as when he was born <laughs> you know i don't know anything else but you know like without my going back to that thing about um, I don't know, um, the, the first thought, best thought, like, if, the second I, I hear about somebody mention a writer, I try to get on that, like, a lot, like, I, I don't know why, it's a weird impulse that's, like, not necessarily conducive to mental well-being, because, like, it's, like, that, this other part of me that's, like, very just, like, burn, like, accrual and just information slot, snob, I guess, you, or sponge, rather, I try to absorb stuff. And that might not be the best thing. It's like, just because you are, excuse me, <laughs> as I dance around my mic. Um, but yeah, just because things are a 
um, you know, certain writers might get lauded for something and it might be good. And that's why I, I think I'm missing out, like a fear of missing out, but like for the kind of mental, intellectual, slight, artistic way of it, like, you know, with, uh, I'll, hear, I'll hear people talk well and good about maybe the book Gonderol. I don't know, just because I have, I would like to eventually review it, but I, I mean, I watched the movie years ago, maybe like not too long after it came out. 2014, 2015, but like, you know, I, I um, as we were rewatching it multiple times, and then I realized, like, you know, I really wanted to, probably it's been like maybe four years, five, maybe six years since I first bought the book, and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to read it. Same thing with Fight Club, you know, other Fincher film, obviously. Uh, big fan of his. Um, but, you know, I, I try to, like, be like, you know, if I hear about something, I'll, I'll try to get the book, or I'll try to hear that side out and it doesn't just extend to just like ooh like just philosophy books and you know there's the occasional kind of um kind of like small actually kind of weird like in the literary scene of like obscure kind of small youtubers who booktubers or other people that post that have books out there in print and uh um i'm not sure if i want to name drop them necessarily just because i feel like they might if uh, i might be like kind of directing you to them without fully knowing exactly all that much about them um embarrassingly enough but yeah there's a part of me like i'll think about something or i'll hear something or some of it's through youtube like i heard of this author uh named frida iceberg I she's icelandic i think and i was thinking like oh that's interesting because uh you know, she's probably maybe in her 30s and pretty young, and like especially in author's terms, because like there's a lot of, you know, some authors don't really get to getting really into just writing their, you know, their best work until like maybe even their first work sometimes. Like with, I think Don DeLillo didn't write um, White Noise, I think his first book, um, which is obviously fantastic. Um, but you know, the milestone, regardless, but like I think he didn't write that until his 40s. So uh, he would have read it a lot earlier, you know, I'm not trying to say it like necessarily, you know, he could have like, had it in his mind since his 20s who knows but yeah um anyway but yeah there's i heard of her through youtube and i was like oh and then i listened to like a thing she did and then i was like well i'll add her to my wish list as in like i'll add one of her books i think it's called marks i think and she's talking about icelandic kind of like thought and like how that um these kind of opposites like these like strict opposites of like you know, good and evil, or like the str the weak and the strong, like those who are strong and weak, and that kind of reminded me of uh, Miyako Konakomi, <laughs> another <laughs> great uh, author, and how like in the paradise, oh, was it called P paradise? I think it was called um, heaven. Yeah, sorry. Um, and she was talking about that, you know, that kind of like tendency of to associate, you know, like the bullies and that were like horrible, you know, like capable of like making people do horrible embarrassing things and humiliating them uh and getting away with it because they had this idea that it's, it's because the, the strongest people get away with this kind of stuff um so yeah that's i think what she was talking about was like this thing of like the individual and the collective kind of thing that was also interesting of like how iceland is like a very um it, it's actually kind of a little bit more certain right wing kind of autocrats are actually a little bit more uh, some of them have a little bit more of a say just because of like this um i don't know maybe it's just due to the population in different ways like the way it's like dispersed is like very interesting like but I'll, i'm definitely gonna have to look that up too um another thing huh? um but yeah there's I, authors that i add to their like another one of them was like ashley mirrors i think she's a sociologist and i only listened to like maybe one or two kind of interviews while maybe maybe even like a year or two ago but she had this uh take on like she used to be a model and um yeah she's a you know pretty um you know like attractive pretty you know um it fits the bill of kind of like you know that kind of um the the, the kind of build of like a model like she has like that kind of look and then she followed that pursuit for some time and then she ended up quitting um just due to the kind of how much um like i guess inequality like is like a simple way of putting it but like it goes deeper than that there's like a lot of different things to do she uh i'm listening to um i literally just started today actually um because like i can actually get away with this with cleaning i can actually like, we're here one year but in and i was listening to uh very important people people ashley mears um and it's uh i don't know if it has a um how 
long ago, I think it was a few years ago, not too long ago, but I think she was talking about stuff that she was, like, since her kind of uh, dissertation kind of um, to be able to graduate, I guess, uh, from the School of Sociology, uh, you know, she's American, so, like, I think, but I think she uh, might actually go, like, I think she might have interned or whatever, but um, I think she talks about in this is, like, this idea of, like, the club promoters and the clubs and stuff, like, not just as, like, a kind of, haha have a fun time hedonistic kind of thing which is very much what it is but it's like also as a very <laughs> troublingly uh like popular form of like how the elite global type not only like an alex jones kind of like oh the globalists but you know just in a way of like the elite global like just the very the the fact of the matter of them just being the very zero sorry 0.0001% or something like that, you know. We hear this all the time of like 80% of the wealth and then 20, it's like 20%, what is it, 20% of the pop, or, you know, like the, the disparities between wealth and like the Pareto dispar <laughs> distribution, wow, I can't talk. Um, maybe we should save this for tomorrow, anyway. But anyway, I just want to get this thought out because it's like very, just kind of, actually kind of made me angry. Um, well, naturally, as it should, <laughs> and, and maybe it's a good, righteous kind of way, but I, it made me livid to hear how these people, um, actually, weirdly enough, these club promoter, these scummy guys, come from, like, almost, like, not total impoverishment, but, like, uh, kind of, like, lower circumstances in life. They're, like, lower status, and they, and they're, like, very, kind of, re resentment of that, have that kind of thing, and they're, like, I hate the fact that I came from working-class family, so I'm gonna try to make sure that I really spit it in their faces and show how, how lucky I am to be able to get the, you know, this club promoter job and have the, and then, you know, sleep around with the most beautiful woman in the world, and, you know, Victoria's Secret models who are all over, you know, they have to be super skinny, and they have to be a certain height, and they have to be, um, only so, you know, basically only to be utilized and to be exploited as a means of like kind of just looking powerful and be like yeah just showing off like it's all artifice everything is like facile so um and the the way that these uh they're like it's a, it's just you know, a way of um boasting and the braggadocio and the bravado of like the male stat of this the status like the hegemonic status i was talking about um and how and how, even though luckily it, this is only like a very small fraction of the population is doing this, but they get away with it too. It's the weird thing is because it's like they're always on the move. And they're like, well, our next club is in Paris. Well, our next club might be in Madrid. And then another thing might be in Ibiza. You know, they just kind of go around. Some of them DJ, some of them. But a lot of it, it they have, they get like a lot of money. And they just, a lot of it is like promotion, I think, because if you're a club promoter, there's also, I think she said, image promotion. That she was like kind of shadowing their, their job and seeing what they did. And they're like... So much of this had, like, just such a discrepancy against uh, such uh, overt, like, misogyny, such overt, like, just kind of arrogance, to, like, and inequality uh, to the max of just how some of these uh, people would be, like, at the door, like, saying, like, oh, if you're a woman and you're slightly overweight, yeah, get them the hell out of here, F them. If you're, like, you know, if you're not... Um, if you're like a guy, it's like it, it, some of it was towards guys too, but it was like a mainly kind of against a woman. Um, but you know, if you're a guy and you're ugly and you're middle aged, it's okay. If you have all these beautiful women around you, if you have five women around you, that takes some markers off. But if you're a guy and you're ugly, mm, no, no, not gonna happen. So it's like very distinct rules of like you have to look the part, play the part. A lot of vacuous kind of ideas, you know, like it's just people, and this is, I, part of me thinks it's like, yeah, because you're born into it, like you might be born into this thing where you just are thrust into this idea of like having to prove yourself and, and, you know, having to get filler people for this party to pay them to make this club look more popular than it actually is, to make it hot, to make people want to go here, because it's like, so, that's the thing, it's like getting, that's why she said very important people, because these are the VIPs, like, you know, the very, the, the uh, they are tantamount. They are, or you know, to, or they are um, basically the lifeblood of the party because they have to go out there and they have to hustle in and get in, exploit girls and they have to scout the the streets, uh, to, you know, cre creepily enough, for women that fit the bill of like the Victoria's Secret, the super rare one zero point zero zero one percent that are so like like ridiculously real thin um, and tall, just like 
tiring. And then, like, meanwhile, like, the, the rest of the staff underneath that, like, the wait staff and the people, like, making the money or, like, the people making the actual, like, effort, you know, like, those people, like, the cleaning people or, you know, uh, working class, they get the st stiff end of the, you know, like, the short end of the stick because they're basically... That, you know, like, they don't make money, they're nothing. So, like, they get this thing, and, and then it turns into this thing. I think I'm, like, maybe an hour in at the point where she's talking about how some of the people, um, some of the rich kind of club promoters um, who made a good deal of money doing this crap um, basically um, were comparing their, like, one side of the table to the other and, like, these different women that were <laughs> there, like, basically just saying, like, how, like, much better they were because they had all the, you know, like, they have the actual, like, attractive woman. Like, they, they get their, you know, their women have, like, lip filler and they're ugly and they're not, they're not actual, like, European, like, kind of, you know, that central kind of European look or whatever, that symmetrical look. Anyway, but yeah, that's just, I just thought that was angering just because it's weird because these people get away with it and that's a thing. Um, and there's, like, a, it just, it's so slimy, you know, like, these people, they just... They're living. They they have no qualms. They don't lose sleep at night they, of uh, treating people like this and like saying a horrible, inhumane things and degrad you know, denigrating and dehumanizing people and re reducing them down to just the artificial. Like, what do you have to bring to the table? Oh, if you're if you have a body in, in your effable and you know like that's all you have. End of story. What do you have to bring to the table? Oh, you're Latino and you're short. No, get out of here. So that's why that's very infuriating to me. I'll try to do a book review when I'm finished. Um, but yeah, um, I think that's all I had to say about that. Um, I guess I was just trying to talk about like, yeah, there's, there are people in the world that they are just, they can do this. They can spend 50 grand, a hundred grand on to get a bunch of Don Pieria or whiskey or I'm sorry, champagne and to get like very expensive drinks just on drinks alone. It is thing where it's like the people, they, it's just, thing where certain people of society can burn money they can just burn money away literally like there's parties where people like you know so and it's not the only thing they do they do probably much worse probably you know don't even get me out start on like the hollywood elite you know sex parties and like the obvious kind of discrepancies of um maybe that's not the right word but um the obvious kind of um systemic issues to do with predators too and just like people how much you know like drake bell is an example of like how how being manipulated and pred and pred preyed on as a kid actually screws you up and makes your own decision making very weird like it's just that's why it's a stomach it's like it goes down to this thing it goes down to like a local thing you know it's like think local act global i think is a good way of thinking it um as cliche as that sounds um as I check this real quick. Um, but yeah, there's, there's this idea, like, and I think what it has to do with is, like, parenting is, like, so, it's such a hard nut to crack because it is a double-edged sword. And like, even the best intended, well-intended parents with tons of good, and lo like, love for their kids can be dealt a bad hand simply because of, like, uh, some unforeseen thing that's outside their control. You know, like they don't know if their kid's going to get like, you know, manipulated by somebody else and like wrestling with the wrong crowd. So what I think it's, it is, is like people have to be extremely like wary of this stuff, like bringing a human, a sentient human being into this world, like in moral agents, like you have to be, and I get it. People just do stuff and they act, you know, people, you know don't really think like when when it comes to romantic relationships they don't really think about the long-term effects of, like yeah we're gonna have a kid but then it just kind of happens or maybe they um they don't really foresee the but i think it's like that's why i think it's important like super imperative if people are you know together and like having you know they're they're both um fertile obviously like in there if you're younger and you're fertile and you're just you know in the prime of your life to actually look and to think through this stuff um because like that affects you like it goes back on you like you're you have no clue what's gonna happen and not to be paranoid not to this isn't to say yeah it's like kind of like having faith i guess that somehow it will turn out all right it isn't a bad thing but um it's just like don't don't overthink it in the sense of like 
there's never going to be a perfect opportunity ever. So just stop trying to like pretend that there is and just stop trying to um, plan every single moment. But at the same time, don't be so thoughtless as to just kind of bring somebody into this world and to like not have the wherewithal, the means or the, the any intention of like b making sure that you're like a just and good and dignified person or like father figure or mother figure or what have you. So um, I guess that's all I have. Um, anyway, um, but that's all for now. Um, if I have any more, I'll add more. But as of now, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching. <laughs> um, I know it's a it's a hard thing to ask of somebody to like, you know, watch something that's this long, but I'll try to cut it up into parts and to label them accordingly. So yeah.